Do you happen to not know how to install a custom firmware on your PlayStation Portable? Hello, I'm Zed and today I'm going to show you how to install a custom firmware on your PlayStation Portable in PlayStation Portable Go without the requirement of having a USB cable or a memory card reader. We only need our PlayStation Portable or PlayStation Portable Go. Then we need a memory stick for the PlayStation Portable this is optional for the PlayStation Portable Go because the PlayStation Portable Go has a built-in system storage and we need a working Wi-Fi connection. At first, as you can see, my device is running version 6.20 and I would like to install a custom firmware. But I would not like to use an USB cable and I would not like to use a memory card reader. So... I'm going to show you how to do add a custom firmware onto the memory stick of your PSP, regardless of it being a normal PSP or a PSP Go. This is why I'm showing the memory stick, and there is currently no content on my memory stick of the PlayStation Portable Go. But it says content can be downloaded, so we're going to do this via the internet browser. At first, I'm going to my bookmarks. And on my zload.net website, I have. Oh, Wi Fi is not enabled. Let's try this again. On my website, I have added a few new pages. And via these pages, we can. Well, you will see. At first, as you can see, the URL currently is www.zload.net slash cfw slash 661 lme. But we don't want 661, we want 620 because this device is running 6 version 6.20. So we're going to change this to 6.20. And now we can see wireless installation for the 6.20 LME 2.3 custom firmware. The 6.20 LME 2.3 custom firmware can be installed on any PSP that's currently running system software 6.20. Well, we are running version 6.20. If you happen to use an older PSP, like the FAT 1000 or some of the old PSP 2000s, then it's recommended to use the ME version. It only lacks an L, but otherwise it's better because it's permanent. But fret not, because if we are on version 6.20, we can even install a permanent version on the newer PSPs, like the PSP 3000 or PSP Go. So how to download these promising things? Usually we need a USB cable or like a memory card reader. Well, you just click on these things and then it will prompt a download, which I'm going to save to the memory stick. So all owners of the PSP, regardless of Go or not Go, can relate to this. And then it's going to download an eboot PUP file and a TXT file. After this is done, we're not only downloading the installer, but also the launcher, since we want to start our custom firmware after we've installed it. So once again, selecting the memory stick, eboot pvp, and a txt file. If my Wi-Fi wouldn't be as crappy as it currently is, this download would have been finished by now. And the last part is we need the permanent patch, but we need parts 1 and part 2. You must not forget to download part 2 if you pa download part 1, because only one part is not enough to successfully install the permanent patch. Over here we're once again installing an eboot pvp file and a txt file. And part 2 are important system files for the permanent patch, without these the permanent patch cannot work and will not work, so don't forget part 2, vsedgemodule.prx and bridge.prx. After we've installed all these things, we can close the internet browser, go back to our memory stick, and there we have our tools. The 6.20 LME permanent patch, the LME launcher for the version 6.20, and the 6.20 LME custom firmware installer. Since we need to install a custom firmware at first before we can launch it, we're going to start the installer and install the custom firmware. And despite this not being an original Sony software program, we can still start it on a regular PSP because it is signed and it's pretty much faked as 
genuine as possible so the PSP thinks it's a genuine software. As we can see, L Custom Farmer 6.20 installer. L Custom Farmer is the abbreviation for Light Custom Farmer. A light Custom Farmer is usually just temporary, which means if the battery is empty or you shut down your device or you reboot the device, the Custom Farmer is disabled and you have to use the launcher to re enable it. We're going to press X to install this Light Custom Farmer. It's flashing a few files into the internal well, flash of the PSP, you can compare it to a BIOS and after this is done the PSP reboots back into the normal mode, so the original official firmware mode. Then we go back to our memory stick and now we're going to use the launcher. The launcher is going to show us a quick black screen followed by a quick reboot of the PlayStation Portable and this time it's going to reboot into the custom firmware mode. It says model whatever G and exiting. Depending on your PSP device it will say a 1G or 2G or 3G or 4G or 5G or 7G or 9G or 11G. One of these different ones. But okay, as we can see now we have the date and the month and the week, day and seconds and battery percentage and percent and so on up here because we're now in a custom farmer. If you press select you have an additional menu, a VSH menu and if you check under system settings, system information, you will see we are now running the version 6.20 LME 2.3. This is a very easy and convenient ver version, well and method to install a custom farmer on a PlayStation Portable without the need of any USB cable or computers or laptops or card readers or whatever. You just need pretty much two things. Your PlayStation Portable with a bit free memory, regardless of being the memory stick or the internal PSP Ghost garage, and a working Wi-Fi connection which your PSP can log into so you can visit my website and download the custom firmware files. And since the most important part is still missing, the 6.20 LME permanent patch, we're going to install it now. So after installing the LME custom firmware and launching the LME custom firmware, we're going to make it permanent. How are we going to do this? We're just going to start the permanent patch, which is then creating a backup of an important file, then it's removing a few files and replacing them with patched files. This permanent patch makes your custom farmer on your device permanent. As said, this can only be reverted by upgrading to a newer official version or by rerunning the permanent patch, since rerunning the permanent patch will trigger an uninstall function. So yeah, if we are now going to shut down the PSP or if we are going to reboot it or if we would let it out of battery, run it out of battery, so that's better, then we would still see that the PSP has a completely permanent custom firmware. If you've paid attention to what I did on the device, you can see that I used the shutdown function of the VSH menu, this additional custom firmware menu, and the PSP was fully shut down. I can show it again with the power slider. As you can see, I'm still pressing it. I'm still pressing it. This is not a standby mode. And if I now slightly press it, it will take three to five seconds to boot since well, the boot time is a bit longer, two or three seconds longer than, default, than by default, but nonetheless it's instantly booting into the custom firmware, which is very nice, so these two, three additional seconds shouldn't be that bad. Oops. And as you can see, instantaneously booted into the custom firmware, so this is very nice, and this installation via internet browser is also very nice. These custom farmers are currently hosted for version 6.20, 6.39, 6.60 and the most recent PCP farmer 6.61. Keep in mind that the permanent patch only exists for version 6.20 
and that if you have an old PSP like the 1000 or 2000 is really recommended to use the ME Custom Farmer since the ME Custom Farmer is always a permanent custom farmer but it only works on the old PSPs so if you have an old PSP use the ME Custom Farmer and if, if you have a new PSP use the LME Custom Farmer if you happen to be on version 6.20 then you can gladly use the permanent patch and if you happen to be on 6.39, 6.61 or 6.60 then you can use the light speed mod modification which is not as good as the permanent patch but it's the very next best thing. If you're asking yourself how to access the websites for the version 6.60 or 6.39, just change the URL from 660 LME to whatever, 661 LME, 639 LME, 620 LME. And if you want to know how to access the ME versions, then change the name of the custom farmer behind the numbers into ME. For example, 660 ME will lead you to the 660 ME website. And since I'm talking way too much and this video is way too long, I'm going to end this video. I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with these additional websites or at least sub pages I'm hosting. And as always, see you soon.